Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. As investors in real estate, we look across the horizon and all kinds of markets and properties and products. Today, we're going to talk about a niche within real estate that has some unique upside and some great tax benefits. And it's something you might not have considered before. Plus, we've got a great guest today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Have you thought about adding agricultural real estate to your portfolio? Hey, it's Robert Helms. For years, we've been talking about the various ways to capitalize from the impending calorie crunch by investing in land that yields productive crops. The concept is sound, the need is proven, and it can be a great way to diversify by both product type and market. If that sounds interesting to you, consider joining me on a live opportunity tour to Panama and Paraguay this December. We'll learn firsthand about several specific opportunities and have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Paraguay Citrus and Greenhouse Plantation Tour. If you'll cover your flights, the Paraguay Ag Invest Team will cover your hotel, tours, and meals. So join me in Panama and Paraguay, December 9th to 13th. Go to Real Estate Guys Radio under events. Profit from farming without getting your hands dirty. Join me on the Paraguay Citrus and Greenhouse Plantation Opportunity Tour, and I look forward to spending time with you and learning together. That's realestateguysradio.com under events. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms, with me, as usual, co-host financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. If our voices sound a little hoarse, it's because we've been uh, talking at the Secrets of Successful Syndication. Amazing group of folks, more than 260 people at this event, the biggest one we've done. Yeah, it's just a ton of fun. And the, the caliber of people, that's what's so impressive. Uh, you know, we do at the beginning, we kind of want to get a gauge of who's in the audience and before we start speaking. And we ask everybody, how many of you already own real estate? And virtually every single hand Pretty in the room went up. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, a lot of real estate seminars are people that want to learn how to invest in real estate. And they're trying to figure out how to get into their first property. They're interested in no money down, getting started. That's a great crowd. Yeah, great. But the people who have already figured out how to make money in real estate, and the only thing that they need is more money, more credit, more deal flow, that's the type of person that we're attracting. And we had, I think, three or four different countries. So people come from all over the world, all over the state. Uh, we do this twice a year. And it's such a great time because we put together this eclectic group of speakers. And it's people who are professionals, who are experts in law and uh, some of the other aspects. Uh, but we also have people that are real world syndicators that have started. Some of them started their career in this very seminar and have gone through the process of being a small syndicator all the way up to now the top guy. We call him the $100 million man, but now it's $140 million. Almost 150 It's grown 40% in the last six months. And that's kind of the way the business can go. But so many other people, we had one gentleman that I ended up just talking to out uh, over coffee. And he said, you know, I, I did this seminar four years ago and I was, I sat with you at the VIP lunch. You may not remember. And I, I he started talking I'm like, oh yeah, I remember you a little bit. And then he said, well, I took the training and I went out and I put together a debt offering and I have raised in the last four years, $35 million dollars. I'm like, wow, would you come up in the front of the room and share that? And he did. So we don't even know what's going out. We just kind of cast the seed. But the caliber of people, the caliber or the quality of the teaching from the faculty is outstanding. And the things that we learn, because people syndicate a lot more than just real estate. Yeah, absolutely. And today, in fact, we've got a gentleman as our guest who has raised tons of money in syndication for a real estate related asset that we've learned to know and love, which is oil and gas. And oil and gas is a very different investment. And the reason we wanted to get Bob on the program today is as people are looking at the end of the year and tax planning, there's a huge tax advantage to oil and gas investments that doesn't exist in too many other investments. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, it's really, and Tom Wheelwright was here at the event and he was explaining some of that. And it's really powerful, you know. So if you're at the end of the year and you've got a big tax problem, you're trying to figure out where can I deploy some capital uh, in order to get a tax break. A lot of people just give money to charity. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you could actually make an investment and get a similar tax break, how good would that be? And the other thing about oil and gas that's particularly interesting, started out just wanting to understand the oil and gas industry because back after 2008, Ken McElroy was very focused on markets that had energy as an underpinning in their economic model. Right. And he said the reason that's important is because, A, energy is forever. It's not something that's a fad. It's not an industry that shuts down. And any type of economic recovery is going to require 
require the uh, development and consumption of energy. So that was number one. Uh, number two is these are jobs that cannot be exported. You, it's not a factory that's going to move overseas. So if you can uh, have investment real estate where there's jobs being created around the energy industry, uh, that's going to be a more stable economy. And sure enough, that turned out to be true over these last 10 years. In fact, Texas, a big oil producing economy, uh, was the job creation leader coming out of 2008. So we started really paying attention to oil and gas, trying to understand it. Of course, like anything else that you start paying attention to from the periphery, all of a sudden you go, wow, this this has really got some unique benefits. You know, Kiyosaki's been telling us for ages about the tax benefits of investing in oil and gas. And then when we started studying currency and the dollar and understanding what's going on there, I went, wow, you know, oil and gas has a history with the petrodollar in association with the dollar and currency, but it also acts as a hedge against currency because it's a commodity just like gold. And so that is, so there's just a lot of interesting nuances. Of course, we're hardly uh, experts in oil and gas, but we are learning. And that's why we hang around with smart people who know a lot more than we do. Yeah, I guess today's Bob Burr. He's been in the oil business for uh, over 45 years. So he's starting to learn his way around the business. <laughs> and uh, as you'll hear, he's got a great background in it. But what's really interesting to me about oil and gas is it's not just oil and gas. There's all kinds of periphery business. You know, you think about the uh, the big assembly line businesses and how they co-locate with all their manufacturers and parts suppliers and so forth to create kind of this ecosystem. Uh, we had Gene Gill on the show a few weeks back talking about the Space Coast, and there's more than 400 independent employers who are all located there or locating there because NASA is there. So it's not just that NASA's there, it's that all these ancillary businesses. And we're going to learn today about something, an, an element of of the oil and gas business that I didn't even know existed that turns out to be pretty lucrative. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you think about Silicon Valley, it's the same thing. You know, when we went into Memphis and we started looking, people would co-locate because FedEx had a big hub there right. and they could move paper or organs. I mean, you know, human organs because they had a big medical infrastructure there. When Steve Jobs needed his liver uh, replacement, he, he actually had that done in Memphis because they uh, because of the facilities there. So the, the point is, as a real estate investor, you're, you're interested in a lot of things. You're interested in, in you know, the, the, the concept economically, what's going on. Uh, the energy input into the economy is an important factor. The jobs that are created by a primary driver like energy, but then it spills over to these uh, secondary and tertiary businesses. And then what we have discovered, and you're about to learn here, is that there are actual businesses that are associated to oil that aren't directly oil. So you can make a profit based on the oil business without necessarily having the same level of risk as you would normally have uh, investing in oil. So it's a fascinating topic. You're going to love it. And you're going to love the guest. We come back to meet our friend Bob Burr today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Live nationwide, you're listening to the Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Real Estate Guys listeners, are you tired of losing real estate deals due to financing issues? Have you had enough of waiting on banks, lenders, and investor groups to fund new projects? What if there were a way to eliminate all the hassle and invest in real estate on your own terms? I'm here to tell you there is. Patrick Donahoe here from Paradigm Life. I'm an Investopedia top 100 most influential financial advisor, and I recently wrote a best-selling book about the financial strategy that changed my entire investment model, and the one that could change yours. To get a copy of my book for free and learn how you can maximize your real estate portfolio by acting as your own bank, send an email to mybank at realestateguysradio.com. Don't make another real estate deal without reading my book first. Email mybank at realestateguysradio.com now to get your copy for free. Do you have a self-directed IRA invested in a syndication? Guess what? It's a ticking time bomb. Why? Because IRAs get hit with UBIT taxes, even Roth IRAs. Hi, I'm Damian Lupo, and we fix this problem for you forever. It gets even better because using the EQRP, you can literally get rid of taxes from all of your gains forever and protect your nest egg. The EQRP is the best vehicle to get it done. IRAs can't do it, not even Roth IRAs. You see, UBIT happens whenever any type of IRA invests in anything with debt. Don't worry, even if your IRA is already invested in a deal, we can kill that tax. Our team at Total Control Financial is here to give you control of your retirement money and free you from that deadly IRA tax forever. 
Want to learn more about the EQRP? Send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com. I'll email you my special report and send you a copy of the QRP book. Paying a 37% UBIT tax is stupid. First step to getting rid of that tax is to send an email to eqrp at realestateguysradio.com today. When it comes to successful rental property investing, it pays to be picky. Pick the right markets, pick profitable properties, and pick great property management. That's easier said than done, but we've got great news. Jerry Curran and his rock star team at Mid-South Home Buyers are going strong in Memphis, Tennessee, and Little Rock, Arkansas, too. So for a top-notch turnkey single-family home rental property, whether you're a new investor or have a large portfolio already, pick Terry Kerr and Mid-South for a truly A-plus investing experience. To learn more, send an email to Mid-South at realestateguysradio.com. That's Mid-South at realestateguysradio.com. Hi, this is Chris Martinson, author of Prosper, and you are listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. I heard every weekend on this great radio station all the time at realestateguysradio.com. So many ways to invest, and today we're exploring, if you will, a little about oil and gas. Please welcome from Panther Exploration, our good friend, Mr. Bob Burr. How are you, Bob? Fine. How you doing, buddy? Always good to see you, and great to have you at the event well, this thank weekend. thank you so much Really for appreciate you coming out, and uh, you blew a lot of people's mind, which well, was awesome. Well, good. And uh, you've been in business a long time. Yep. And you've been in the oil business. How did you get involved in oil way back in the 70s? Well, I was in the insurance business, lifetime member of the Million Dollar Roundtable. Yeah. So I was doing good. But the problem with that is I had maxed out on my productivity because I am a workaholic. I'd maxed out and I couldn't grow anymore. My brother got in the business with a gentleman in Dallas. He knew that I was a pretty good salesperson. And so they, uh, they fly me to Dallas. I look at the deal. I didn't care about the folks that was running it. And I'm pretty, I'll tell you what's on my mind. And I told my brother, I said, you're the sharp one. If you can run the business, make it work, I can fund it. I was 27 years old. I said, now, do you want to take that responsibility? And he said, yeah, I can do that, Robert. And so I said, I'll be back here in September. And that was, Doris was pregnant with Jay Burr. So I go back home, sell my place to get the capital to go in business put my sweetheart in an apartment till the baby comes, and I'm back in Dallas in September, and we kick off and never look back. Wow. That's a true story. Well, we learned uh, over the weekend that, that I had heard that part of the story, that you and your brother were kind of the different sides of the business, running the business, you're out selling the business. So instantly you had to learn about this and, and understand, and today what we want to make sure folks understand about oil and gas is there is certainly an economic benefit. Everyone goes to the pump. They see what happens to oil prices, and that should all be pretty clear. But especially what's interesting about it is, at this time of year, the tax benefit. And we're none of us are tax professionals. We had Tom Wheelwright here this weekend, and he pointed this out. But um, we often say we don't let the tax tail wag the investment dog. This might be an exception because you have to understand the, the base investment. But there's a really unique set of big picture tax incentives for people to invest in oil. Yes, that's a that's a major play. I remember the first cruise that we were on with you guys. Yep. And the first time I was uh, in able to talk to, in front of the group. And I asked the folks in the audience, how many folks here know the tax advantages of oil and gas? And there was three, 400 people there in the audience. I think two hands went up. Right. And I was actually amazed. I mean, it was just, I couldn't believe it. In oil and gas, the way it works, if you invest a dollar, the federal government will let you write off all the intangible cost of that drill, meaning if you drill a hole in the ground, it has no value. It's a hole. Yeah. They used to make us depreciate the equipment out over seven years, and eventually you'd write off 100%. Now we get to write off the equipment also. So you're talking about a 90 or 95% tax write-off against ordinary income the first year. Right at the beginning. At the very beginning. Yeah. Now what's neat, and a lot of folks don't understand this or don't maybe – open up to see it, but this time of year, I raise more money than the rest of the time combined. Right. My folks have had the opportunity of working their money for 10 or 11 months, and now they give it to me and write it all off, so they've lost the earning power of that money for two or three months. Yeah. So they had the bulk of the year to make money with their money, and they also get to write it off. 
Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful good, deal. Good, good stuff. So it takes a while to figure that part out, but that's really one of the major reasons people invest this time of year. But at the same time, you have different types of, of ways of investing. So we've covered this before, but we have a lot of new listeners. So really a couple of different ways to invest in oil. There's the exploration to try to figure out, is there oil in that, right? And right. the fact that many times these are not owned properties, but leases. And then there's just wells that produce. Kind of talk about the difference there. In the oil and gas business, you have to get a game plan of where you want to go with it. What is best for your partners? Yep. I found out over the years with my people, with the tax write-off that they get, they don't really need me to be wildcatting, meaning a one in 50 shot, yeah. meaning that if we hit it, we make them 50, 60, 70 times their money. They don't want that. Because uh, most times you don't hit. Most times you don't hit. Right. Like a fellow told me years ago, I said, sir, you can write it off. And he said, boy, if I just want to write it off, I'll give it to the Boy Scouts. Yeah. So he shut me up. I was 27 years old when he told me that. <laughs> uh, so we stay with the developmental drilling. Uh, I have several over the years. I've been here for many, many years. I've made many, many contacts. They know I fund uh, projects. I've never had one project that I started with that I didn't drill. I mean, I do my job. I know right. how to do my job. But they know what we want. Okay, we go back into old fields. Like right now, we're in fields that British Petroleum owns Yep. Uh, by way of Atlantic Arco. And the fields were uh, discovered in the 40s. So the, dr the initial drilling was in the 40s, in the 50s, in the 60s, in the 70s. Along comes Bob. My guys are looking at it. We have every log on every well in this field. We know exactly where they produce from. We know how to get up dip mean high on structure, meaning we'll get good reserves in our wells, and we're able to find one or two, in this case, seven undrilled locations in this acreage. Now, why would BP sell this lease to us? Right. Because we're carrying them for 25% of the production income as an overriding royalty. That means if we produce $1,000, they get 25% of it. We get the uh, 75%. We got to pay the bills. They don't pay a bill. So they're making money. It's a, it's a lock. So when they originally came to this, these fields in the 40s and 50s, they basically got the low-hanging fruit. They drilled. They took oil. And over time, it kind of depletes. And so they're interested in bigger stuff. You they're come in Alaska. Along. Right. They're gone. Yet they can get some yield, and you can come in and get some yield. Yeah, and I give them a brand-new asset. Right. I'm making them money. So I went to work for them. Now, it behoves everybody. Now, what it does when we do one of these, I'll hire an outside unbiased firm, geological firm, and I said, go in and kill the deal. I said, your job is to kill the deal to protect me and my partners because I'm in love with it. Right. I can raise money drilling BP farm outs. I know I can. Yeah. The name is there. The real reality of it is real. Right. And uh, so they go in. And on this one of them, on this particular deal, they cut the reserves by 15%, but they found a deeper zone that they feel that BP missed that could give us back even more. Now, we have to go a little deeper, I think another 500 feet down to 10,000. So it just, okay, let's go. I mean, I, I can't do any more than that. Yeah. So we pulled the switch on it, and here we are. It's that simple. Now, how long does a well like that produce for? Well, hell, some of those wells that were drilled in 40 are still producing out there. Yeah. Five barrels a day, 15 barrels a day. It's all basically the equation is based on the porosity, the permeability. Uh, shale, it has no porosity. That's why you have to frack them so hard and crack them open. Yeah. And then it fills back in. you got to crack it open again in two years, three years. It's the ongoing. These don't. You know, they just... They just keep coming. They're good, beautiful sand. Yeah, 18. so this is not fracking. We hear, we've heard a lot about no. to find, you know, hard to get oil and so forth that you frack, but that comes with a whole bunch of cost and, and, and so But that's not stuff no, you get involved with. Not at all. Yeah. This will be, a, we'll put some acid on it, clean it up, get all the mud, drilling mud out of it. It'll come to see us. Yeah. Won't be a pump jack, anything for at least the first five years. It'll flow. And that's just what we do. Now, the problem for me with that, if it is a problem, the truth of the matter is I won't find but one or two of these a year, sometimes none. Yeah. So what I had to do to keep my partners involved in the business 
is to find other businesses associated directly with the oil and gas business that make sense. Yeah. Now, for them to make sense to me, I have to get excited. I don't get excited about a 5% return or 10% return. I just don't. That doesn't do me good. Uh, so here, three years ago, we started looking at saltwater disposal wells. What that means is, is these wells produce oil. They also produce tremendous amounts of salt water. Salt water. You cannot dump salt water on our surface. It kills everything. So the government requires the producers to pump this water back down into the earth, into an unburying sand. You have a pay zone, we call it. It's a sandbar at 5,000, 7,000, whatever. No oil in it. The oil didn't develop there. Yep. But it has porosity. It has permeability. It has everything. And it will take water. It will take salt water. So instead of having it up on the surface, killing everything, they say put it back in the ground. Yeah. And we pump it down in the ground. As long as these wells make 10 barrels a day, they're going to make 100 barrels of water. Yeah. They bring us that water all over the country. Uh, I started looking at it uh, three years ago. I knew we had to have one contact. I wasn't really inclined to move down to Goliad, Texas. I'm 70 years old. I got a young son. He's 30. He'll do what Papa needs. <laughs> and so I said, Bozo, get ready. And, of course, he's very applicable to it. And uh, we found one gentleman down there that's his family's been there 60 years. He's straight, straight, good boy, good fellow. And I started visiting with him, and the oil prices went down. Now, remember, and I want you to understand this, if oil prices go down below $30, it's not economically feasible to operate these wells at the cost, fracking, this sort of thing. Right. So we don't lose our well. We own this well. It's ours forever. Yep. We have a lease, and leases are 10 years with another extension for 10 years or 20 years. Some of them we have a flat 20 years. So we got that lease. We may have to pay the landowner a little rent, and we just sat there. We shut the wells in which uh, Gary did here during the, the downturn two, two and a half years ago, three years ago. Yep. That's when I go to Gary, and I said, Gary, your partners have made a lot of money. Oil was $95 a barrel, and they got well. Yeah. I said, go back to them and tell them I'll take them out for a bonus where they can make more money. Yep. But the only way I'll do that is if you'll guarantee me that you will be a 25% partner with me in everything we do. Folks, I'm locking him into me and our operation as our operator. I said, you've got the knowledge, you have the contacts, you have the experience. Now, Bo Burr, my son, 34 years old, will be right there with him. We have our play, already have a place there. Bo goes down two weeks a month. He's out cooking for the drivers. He's out hugging people. He's doing what Papa said do, yeah. and, and I understand what to do. And it's just working beautiful. Now... As we get our feet on the ground and as I get a feel for all the people and I see who the alpha players are in the deal, then I slowly have been massaging the operation. Two Tuesdays ago, I leave Bowling Green at 4 o'clock in the morning. I catch a flight at 6. I'm in San Antonio at 10. I'm in Goliad at 11.30 or 12 with my CPA, Danny Looney from Dallas. And I walk in. I said, folks, I love y'all. But your counting is way, way, way below par. Two and two is four, but the way you get there nowadays is a little bit more, I hate to use the word sophisticated, but it's a little more in-depth than what you're doing. Yeah. And I brought in my specialist, and you'll love him. He's not acidic. He's a good man. He will not impose on you. And sure enough, Danny went in, and we're getting it just beautified, and they're happy. They're tickled to death that somebody that really knows the business is there to help them right. because they were doing the best they could. And so I believe in keeping them 1,000 million percent transparent in everything we do. But I got to know that we have a half million dollars in aging accounts receivable. That's a pretty big asset. Yeah. And that, so we get it cleaned up and we're doing one now that the first two years it was in production, it made four and a half, four point eight million dollars. Bottom line money. That's a lot of money, guys. Yep. Now we talk about associated business. The kicker on this is we buy this well. We have all these companies bringing us their water. 
we're disposing of 10,000 barrels a day. 1%, 2%, 3%, half a percent of that water is oil. Right. 10,000 barrels at 1% is 100 barrels of oil a day that's ours. There's no overrides. Atlantic Richfield or BP is not getting 25 cents on the dollar. It's ours. Yeah. Us and our partners. Because it's the water you're disposing yeah, of, but mixed it's just in cared. there. It just ha- they can't get it out. They can't clean it right. any better than that. So you have a process to be able to pull out that little bit of excess oil, yes. which in itself is valuable. My goodness. And you get paid to dispose of the water. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, so previously, you'd have to find a service to do this, but you've discovered that this is a way that, in addition to what you do on oil gas, to provide the service, get paid for it, and it is the word, maybe not sound like the right word, but skim a little bit of the oil off the top. That's right. What we do is separate it. That's yeah. the better word. Yeah. They, they know it's there. It's not like they're surprised. They're right. doing the best they can. Right. They, get, they get out as much as they can. They can. Yeah. And they're not giving their stuff away. EOG is the best. They are very, very effective, very efficient. Uh, we're looking at another business down there that's associated. Yeah, uh, It's a tank building business. EOG is their only client, which I, I have a problem with that in my doing our due diligence. Yeah, But it's uh, probably a $4 million deal. And uh, they're building, actually building fracking units that are all contained. And I won't go into details. We don't, don't have enough time. But this company that we're looking at, purchasing, moves in the whole unit, runs the show, contracts out for their fracking, and EOG feels they can save hundred to 150000 per well. Well, say on a platform, they'll drill seven wells yeah. from one platform. Well, that's $750 million they've drilled or they've saved in money by doing this, using this. But they wear you out. They, okay, they're a big company. Yep. Okay, 90 days accounts payable. Okay, if you want to expand, they want you to expand to use your capital, not yep. theirs. Yep. So there's some negatives there, and we will make a good decision. Uh, I don't have to have the deal, thank God. Yeah. So you can look at it just as neutral as you can. I'm, I'm, all, I'm interested in one thing, bottom line money Yeah. for us, as, us and our partners. That's it. That's all I care about. So we get the tax benefit of oil and gas, and here's saltwater disposal. Does it have any tax benefit? Same as the oil and gas. They get the, with this new depreciation on equipment, writing off. We're getting maybe even a little bit better. I mean, it's no, it's right in there. And then what also what we're doing is, is unique in the business. And everything we do, remember, it's work. It's creative work. It's a lot harder to do it the way we do it than the ordinary guy that just does a well. Yeah. But we like to take one of our drilling prospects and tie it into a saltwater disposal well. I got him covered on the base with the, the uh, disposal well. Yep. We gamble, got more more pop on the well economically. If we yep. hit it, yep. believe me, if we hit it, there, I've, I've had some big wells that's paid Bob Burr a lot of money. Yep. Uh, we're home. They'll forget the other one, or they'll be proud it is. And so we do that sort of thing, the structures. We don't do it all the time, but we do it. I've even thought about some uh, property in in your in your business, going in with with our oil deal, yeah, to give it a base, right? You know, and and that's just working. Like I said yesterday in our meeting, if you don't take your client's money probably more seriously than your own, you have the ability. I have the ability to to lose money, and I can keep playing. I'm not like a ball player that my career is over and I've missed lost all my money. I can't go back and run a forty and four three. I'm 55 years old. I'm 70. Yeah. But I can go. I still have plenty of fire. But when you're dealing with these folks that maybe don't have that ability, then damn it, you have a moral responsibility. And I mean that. I'm not joking here on the radio with you, and I'm not playing. Right. I'm not trying to get someone a smile. I mean it. These folks deserve everything in you. To, if you're going to work for them and you're taking their money, get serious. Don't do it casually. That's not that's not cool. Such good advice. In fact, that was one of the great messages that you were able to deliver at the syndication event and had no idea that that was where you were going, but it was awesome because it's exactly how we train syndicators is it is the most sacred thing. 
somebody's hard-earned money. They've worked hard. They're going to entrust it. And so that's why an investor who's looking for this type of, of potential upside in terms of return as well as tax benefit needs to understand. And, you know, that's our whole thing, education. And uh, we got more to educate you with when we come back. And we'll hear more from Bob Burr. Plus, we'll play Real Estate Trivia next. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real Estate Investment Advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hungry for more real estate investing ideas? Here's two steps you can take today. First, go to realestateguysradio.com and sign up for our weekly newsletter. You'll get access to a continuous feed of thought-provoking commentary specifically for real estate investors while also focusing on broader picture economics. Then, once you're at our site, look for the Resources tab where you'll find our amazing collection of special reports. Browse dozens of white papers, webinars, and market reports and request the ones that appeal to you. What are you waiting for? Head to realestateguysradio.com to implement education for effective action. Are you achieving everything you want in life? What if there was a time-tested way for you to get everything you've dreamed of? The most successful people in life set goals and keep themselves accountable. But how? The good news is that it's not rocket science. You too can learn the skills and unleash the motivation that will create success in your life. And now is the time. Hi, this is Robert Helms, and I'd like to personally invite you to attend Create Your Future, the 2020 Goals Retreat, January 17th to 19th in beautiful Lake Las Vegas, Nevada. This unique weekend has been called phenomenal, inspirational, and life-changing by the thousands of people that have attended. Hear from some of them and find out more at realestateguysradio.com under events or call 888-489-7723, extension 18. Get your life back on track physically, spiritually, and financially. Attend the 2020 Goals Retreat on the third weekend of the new year. Click events at realestateguysradio.com to register. This is no dress rehearsal. Live the life you were meant to. Visit realestateguysradio.com or call 888-489-7723, extension 18, today. Hi there, this is Danielle DiMartino Booth, author of Fed Up, an insider's take on why the Federal Reserve is bad for America, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks so much for tuning into the show. Sure hope you plan to join us in New Orleans for the 45th annual New Orleans Investment Conference. It takes place the first week in November. You can get all the details by just sending an email to neworleans at realestateguysradio.com. You'll find out about the conference and how to be invited to our super secret, awesome listener sweet party. It's going to be a blast. We're talking today about investing in oil and gas and, of course, related activities. Before we get back to our conversation with Bob Burr, it's time to play Real Estate Trivia, your chance to win a prize by knowing today's Real Estate Trivia question, which, of course, will have something to do with our topic. As soon as you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com trivia at realestateguysradio.com. First person with the right answer gets an awesome book called The One Thing That Changed Everything, a collection of amazing stories from great people put together by our friend Kyle Wilson. That can be yours if you know today's real estate trivia question. Last week, we were talking about studying market trends with Jared Garfield, and we asked this, name the official fish of Georgia. Yeah, the state of Georgia has an official fish, and it's the largemouth bass. You learn something every week on The Real Estate Guys, don't you? Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. Speaking of states, which U.S. state produces the most oil? There's a lot of states in the U.S. that produce oil. In fact, the U.S. is now the number one producer of oil in the world, which some people find very surprising. But within that, which state produces the most? If you think you know or just want to guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Include your name the answer to the question, and your mailing address so that if you're the winner, we can send you the one thing that changed everything. Which U.S. state produces the most oil? That's today's real estate trivia question. We're talking about oil and gas investing and some ancillary businesses with a lot of upside and some tax benefit. And we're here with Bob Burr. Bob, you know, uh, people have uh, lots of different motivation for investing. And some people are looking for a short-term investment. I want to get in. I want to get out. And a lot of real estate investors are more long-term. 
month. Talk about the time duration for these types of investments. If someone says, wow, well, the saltwater thing sounds really interesting. What, what does that look like in terms of an investment? Maybe some, you know, capital minimums. How long do these things last? Well, generally, we our unit price is 100000 Yep. Uh, per unit. If we raise in $3 million, be 30 folks at 100000 Yep. We use the Reg D 506C offering, uh, meaning that the folks have to have verification that they are indeed uh, credited. Yep. We re- just go right by the letter of the, of the law regarding funding projects. Yep. So you have a deal, you give me 100000 you get to write off 90, whatever, 95000 against ordinary income. And, so, and the reason it's 90, 95, it depends on the specifics of the deal yes. and what could be written off. Yes. But it's a big chunk. It's a big chunk, at least 85 to 90. Yeah. And that's a fair statement. So now you've received a tremendous economic benefit going in. We were taxed on 200000 Well, now you taxed on 120000 Yep. So that's how it works. So you can add up two and two is four. It works. Yeah. So that's a good treat. Real nice. Now we drill the well. And the well comes in, and let's say that it's a mediocre well, and it pays you out in seven years. Well, in seven years, I made you 35% on your money, didn't I? Right. Just in tax savings. Yep. That's not all bad. It doesn't get me excited. Right. But I can live it with it if yeah. I had to. Or let's say it uh, does like a well I drilled years ago in East Texas, Panola County. I drilled a well, and 20 years later, after getting checks for 20 years, I sold my little piece of it, and I didn't have much to Atlantic Richfield for $395,000. Pretty good, nice little cash. I, I needed some cash, and I said, I wonder what they'd give me for this. And I cashed out for him. I've been paid out how many times? Right. Bunch. Uh, there's ways if folks needed liquidity, we can bundle up production packages. Yep. There's always people looking to buy production, and they'll generally buy it two and a half times payout, meaning – They'll take your income and give you two to three times if you're in horse trade. So if you're making a dollar, they'll give you two and a half dollars for it. Yep. Three dollars. There's not I wanna I do not want to tell you there's a liquid market. I'd be fibbing to you. There's not. Right. We have to help with that. Saltwater disposal wells, we get in there, everything's rolling the way it's rolling now. God, it's just a beautiful vehicle to take public. I mean, it is debt free, cash flowing, big, big money. Yep. Now, I'm at the age I'd have to bring in some younger guys to run that sort of thing, but it's there. Yeah. I, I don't know the multiple on your money that you could make, but yeah. it could be big. It could be big. Because you just think about walking into a deal debt-free. Let's say we have 10 wells, now each one making 750000 That's $7.5 million clean money, income, no debt. You can do it. You know, right now, my folks will be taking that money, and hopefully they'll be on our cruise going down next year. Yeah. Folks, the ones, I'm going to get off the subject just a second, but the folks that haven't been on the real estate cruise, the ones that come here to the meetings in Dallas or wherever the boys are, you owe it to yourself. You'll go into a situation that the spirit of love and cooperation will overwhelm you. It's basically like going to a family reunion. Like my wife has a family reunion. It's been going on 92 years in East Texas, and I'll griping all that bull corn about going. I want to go play golf. But when we get there, you see your buddies and you're getting your hugs. That night you got a poker game going, a little nickel-dime game, and you're getting to hear all about the kids, about Johnny going to the Little League World Series, on and on and on, and that's what they have on the cruise. So don't do yourself an injustice and not go. I mean, I'm telling you from the bottom of my heart, it is so beautiful. Please come join the folks and enjoy it. And not only that, you might make some money. Yeah, so you might. That's I right. wanted to throw that in for you. Well, thanks for that. You know, Bob, a lot of folks haven't considered oil and gas before, and that's kind of why we wanted to bring up this topic. And for someone that has a tax need, it's, it certainly makes sense to take a look at. But longer term, as part of a portfolio, I know a lot of your investors are, you know, primarily oil and gas investors, but I also know that you have a lot of folks that do other things, and this is a way they think of portfolio management and a little money in oil and gas and so forth. And um, talk about the kinds of people that generally do invest in this. Well, I've found that the real estate syndicators are great customers. I have very large financial people. I tell them never... If they don't have speculation money, they're not large enough to get in the oil and gas business. I don't want their hard money, their sacred money, their seed money. Yeah. 
okay? You've got to be able to afford to play in this game with us uh, because we can we can lose and we will lose. Uh, so that that's going without being said. We know that. Everybody knows that. But also, if you're at my age or if you're a hitter and you've got some serious money and you want some excitement, this is fun. Yeah. I love to bring guys down when we're drilling well. Last year I went down and spent 16 days on the well. Had uh, one of the boys from the cruise was there with his, his, his son and daughter. And I went and picked him up at Lake Charles, and we just had a great time. Had some catfish and gumbos and this sort of thing. And it's a brand-new world for them. Yeah. Now, it works my butt off because i got to go over everything, explaining everything, which is perfectly – that's why I'm there. Yeah. And uh, so that you, we can have fun. We'll have a tent set up. We'll be barbecuing. And they're talking to geologists. They're talking to – they're in a, a walk of life they've never – they. It was never there. They didn't know it existed. Some old rough roughnecks that's walking out there, and my God, he looks like he, he, you know, some of these boys are rough. Yeah. And uh, they get to experience that. So that, but on the same token, like the fella told me when I was a kid, if I want to write the money off, I'll give it to the Boy Scouts. Burr, how are you going to make me some money? What business are you in, Burr? Well, folks, I'm in the money-making business. Yeah. Oil and gas is my vehicle. But I'm in the money making business. I'm way too old to practice. Yeah. Well, one of the things we appreciate about you, Bob, is your team. You brought on your sons. You've got Chris, who's been on the summit. Uh, you know, you're bringing up the the next crop, if you will. Oh, so yeah. talk about that angle of it. Oh, it, it's it's beautiful. Uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I sold out to Marathon ten years ago. Got my bucket full. Uh, I'd never been able to play golf like the rest of them. Yep. And I'm a competitive fellow. <laughs> so I said, I think I'm just going to learn how, and I'm going to beat their butts. And I did. I won Super Senior Championship five straight years, four or five. And I'm just finishing my round of golf, and a picture of one of my great-grandsons came across my face. He was four. He's my best buddy. And I said, golly, I've got seven great-grandsons, one beautiful little angel great-granddaughter, 20 grandchildren, Five grown kids. I got a head full of sense when it comes to my business. I got as much drive as anybody alive. I don't care how old they are. And you're playing golf, Burr? <laughs> I said, you're cheating your clan, stud. I said, this is terrible. And I really, I had a, I, I, I had a, a real heart-to-heart -heart come to Jesus meeting. Yeah. And I went straight to the office. I got a 40,000-square-foot building downtown, Bowling Green, Kentucky. Got my own gym. Everything's there for me. I walked in and said, boys, get ready to roll. I'm putting my helmet on. Let's go. Yeah. And I started. And uh, I'll go. I told them I'm going to give them five years. Well, hell, I'm not. I'm going to give them longer than that. <laughs> I, 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 play, I still play golf every day. Sure. <laughs> so what the heck? Why not? Right. And I love it. Awesome, man. Well, hey, this has been great. Uh, when we come back, we're going to tell you how you can learn more. Bob's got a bunch of great material. They produce videos to explain all of this. They've got a great report, a webinar, and so forth. It'll be easy to get access to all that. Bob, awesome to have you on the program as always. And I know we'll see you at the Investor Summit at Sea. You bet you. Thank you so much. There's Bob Burr from Pan X. More when we come back, you're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, it's Robert Helms. Thanks so much for listening to the show today. I want to personally invite you to come see an amazing real estate market that combines excellent cash flow, offshore diversification, and what we affectionately call lifestyle investing. Come join me from November 15th to 18th in the beautiful country of Belize. The Real Estate Guys have been bringing investors to Belize for more than 14 years now, and our discovery trip is designed to show you the market like nobody else can. Sure, Belize is breathtakingly beautiful. The people are wonderful. And wait till you taste the food. But the real opportunity is the real estate investment potential. 2018 was the biggest year in tourism Belize has ever witnessed, and this year is coming on strong. How does that translate to real estate investment? That's what you have to come see. There's all types of opportunity in Belize, including both long and short-term rentals, commercial and retail triple net properties, business opportunities, land acquisition, development, agriculture, and more. And as the only country in Latin America with English as its official language, it's easy to understand the law. Property rights are strong and contracts are in English. And in Ambergris Key, a unique situation exists where demand for rentals continues to outstrip supply, creating a compelling environment for investors. 
So come see for yourself. Join me November 15th through 18th in Ambergris Key, Belize, as we study the market, learn about the sustainable drivers, and tour lots of beautiful real estate. And like all of our field trips, there are no properties for sale during the weekend. Rather, you'll meet lots of local providers that will help educate you about the market so that you can follow up with them after the trip if the market is interesting to you. But that ball's in your court. You'll receive their contact details, but they won't receive yours unless you give it to them. You've heard about Believes in the Real Estate Guys for all these years. Now come see what all the excitement is about. Plus, we'll have lots of time over meals and activities to talk about all things real estate. To get the details, go to the website at realestateguysradio.com and click on events where you'll find the Belize Discovery Trip. Once you register, you'll get information about our group hotel rates as well as travel details. So join me in Belize, November 15th through 18th. It's a beautiful country with lots of amazing possibilities and the only thing missing is you. Go to realestateguysradio.com under events. I look forward to seeing you in beautiful Belize. Hey, it's Kyle Wilson, Jim Run's 18-year business partner, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Hey, if you lack clarity in your life, it's the time of year where we really think about the new year, not only in terms of taxes, but in terms of what we want to be when we grow up. Every January, we do this event called Create Your Future. It's a two-and-a-half-day goal-setting retreat. All the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com under events. Oh, my goodness. Any day I spend with Bob Burr is a good day. Yeah, it's fascinating. I think if I hung around with him long enough, it would actually change my dialect because uh, it's just so alluring. But, you know, I, I was just saying that during the break that the it, it's getting more and more clear to me. And, and more than that, not just the business model, because it's part of, I mean, when you're looking at a business you're really not familiar with, you know, it's like when people come looking at real estate for the first time and they kind of think they understand real estate simple, right? I mean, you own space and people pay rent to operate in it. And yet there's so many nuances of real estate that people don't understand in ways that you can make money, you know, laundry rooms, cell phone towers. And then you, you branch out to things like uh, agriculture or niches like residential assisted living or self-storage or a lot of different ways to approach the problem. And and that, that idea that there are businesses that are peripheral to the core business and the difference between the highly speculative, what he called wildcatting, I'm going to go just drill and hope I hit and I'm Jed Clampett and I got oil coming up and I can move to Beverly Hills for anybody that's even old enough to remember that reference. <laughs> uh, you know, that that's a high risk deal. But when you know right out of the gate, you're going to get a big tax savings, which is money you would have spent and been gone anyway. Uh, that mitigates a lot of your risk. And then when you're dealing with wells that are proven, the oil's already been found. That's pretty cool. And then when you're dealing with uh, the saltwater thing, it, it made me think of an analogy. And we talked about this pre-production. It, it reminded me of the stories of the gold miners back in California and Levi Strauss. Yeah. And Levi Strauss came out to find his fortune, not mining gold, but selling durable work pants to miners. Yeah. And it didn't matter if the miner hit gold or not. What mattered was that he needed a pair of durable pants to do. And of course, that's how the Levi Strauss brand and Levi's were born. And, and so then, then when he talked about skimming the oil or retrieving the excess oil from the saltwater as bonus, I thought that, that would be almost like if, if you were there and you were making your living uh, doing the laundry of the miners. And the miners come in and they've got these old dirty pants and, you know, they've done their work and they've got their nuggets and they, they think they've scored. And they can't be bothered to get the gold dust out of their pockets. But you've got a process where you've got people who, you know, empty the gold dust out, wash the jeans, give the jeans back. Now you've got the clean water, right, going back in the ground. Get paid to wash the jeans. Get paid to wash the jeans. And you're gleaning all of this gold dust. And it, it turns out to have some real value. So that part of it is like, wow, the light bulb went off me. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And then the other thing, too, is the reason that I think oil is super interesting is the same reason I think agriculture is super interesting. And that is that you do not have to get the local geography right. Energy is a critical input. If you think about oil and gas, it's a critical input into economic activity. There is no economy without energy. We've learned that from Chris Martinson, who also comes on the Summit at Sea. Uh, if you want to hang out with Chris Martinson, it's like a human being, right? You don't get up and go to work and, and produce. There's no human labor without calories. If you don't eat, you die. Right. So energy, whether it's from food or from uh, oil and gas, is a, a critical commodity. And it doesn't matter where you produce it because it's going to go in the world wherever it 
it, it needs to go. But when we think about hedging against a falling currency and buying things like gold or commodities like food or lumber or, in this case, oil, the opportunity to be able to derive some hedge against the currency at the same time you're creating this tax benefit in this business model of being able to get paid to provide a service and then on top of that gleaning extra profit from the unclaimed oil. I mean, when you put all that in a blender and look at it, like it's a really, really fascinating topic. And so I hope that this this last little bit uh, has kind of tied it all together for some folks because it's really come together for me and it's just really starting to make a lot of sense. Hey, if you're interested in learning more, all you have to do is send an email to saltwater, saltwater at realestateguysradio.com and that will get you an email that's got a lot of great information. Bob and his team uh, communicate with uh, videos and you'll see Bob in some of those videos and uh, you'll get to see what the process looks like, but also just some of the tax benefits and so forth. Um, there's webinars available. So anyway, just send an email to saltwater at realestateguysradio.com. You know what was I found interesting, and we've talked about this before, is that as the price of oil changes, we see it reflected in the jobs and housing and all kinds of things because every product has to be moved around pretty much. Uh, and we know that our tenants are going to be paying attention to the price of the pump. But the idea that if the price goes below the production cost, you just press pause. You just wait. You still have an asset. There's still oil there. It just doesn't make economic sense to bring it out now, but it will. Yeah. And there's a flip side to that too. And that's a great point. But on the other side of that, if the price of oil goes up, wow. it puts purchasing power pressure on your tenant and actually puts downward pressure on your ability to charge and raise rents. Yeah. And to mitigate that risk in your portfolio, when you invest in oil and gas, then when the price goes up, even though it weakens your rental income, it strengthens your portfolio income because you, you've kind of diversified onto the other side of the equation. Bingo. So there's a lot of reasons why we talk about oil and gas uh, on the Real Estate Guys radio show because it, it this is real estate is a real asset. And the premise of investing, especially in the economic environment we're in, is to is to have things in your portfolio that are real and that are essential and that will either capitalize on opportunity or mitigate risk that occurs based on what's going on in the economy. And clearly oil and gas was a big driver pulling people out of the 2008 recession. There's no way this world is going to exist without energy, just like it's not going to exist without food. And probably human beings will always want to have a roof over their head. And most businesses are going to need a place to operate. So these are real assets, they're essential assets, and they transcend even currencies, even economics, even governments. These things transcend. So if you can find a way to get involved in these things and do it in such a way that you take advantage of both the tax breaks and the positioning in your portfolio, you can, you can create what we call a resilient portfolio, which I think people, anybody right now in today's economic environment should be really spending time learning how to design a resilient portfolio. Clearly, real estate and oil and gas and things like precious metals all have a role to play in that portfolio. Absolutely. And as real estate investors, you got to get your mind around more than just real estate. That makes you stronger and to get you that compared to what? Big thanks to Bob Burr and the boys of Panex and and until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys radio show.